Well, hello everybody. My name is Dave Linthcom, CTO and founder of Blue Mountain Labs. And welcome to another video. This time we're going to talk about the use of platform as a service clouds in the real world and how that's applicable to you and the enterprise who's trying to build and deploy applications. First, of course, some gratuitous self-promotion. Uh, Blue Mountain Labs is leading the conversation uh, with thought leadership and cutting edge services around the emerging world of cloud computing, how to transform your enterprise to the cloud, a step-by-step -step way. And that's built upon a book I wrote called Best Selling, uh, called uh, Cloud Computing and Soil Convergence in Your Enterprise, best selling book on cloud computing. I'm um, an InfoWorld blogger, and also we do a podcast. We're about to hit episode 200, so check us out at www.bluemountainlabs.com. First, let's return to the NIST definition of cloud computing, ultimately as a set of characteristics, delivery models, and deployment models. Characteristics would be on-demand self-service, ubiquitous network access, provide resource pooling, provide rapid elasticity, and also provide a pay-per-use model. The delivery models are software as a service, platform as a service. We're talking about that during this presentation. Infrastructure as a service, infrastructure being things like storage and compute services, things you typically find in a data center you can uh, Access on demand, public cloud providers such as Amazon and Rackspace, software as a service, guys like Salesforce, you know, some of the Google apps, and then platform as a service, which is really app dev test. And the deployment models, of course, are private. In other words, we own it. It's in our data center. No one else can touch it. Community, we're sharing it with a bunch of known users. Public, we're sharing it with a bunch of unknown users. And then hybrid cloud, meaning we're mixing and matching any of the above three. So to the heart of the matter, platform as a service in the real world, the good and the bad. Good, budget, it's cheap. You can get an app test environment up a very short period of time, sometimes for free, or access to programming languages and databases and the ability to deploy in a staging area and the ability to leverage application development features that are very costly to set up within your own world. Power, it scales, since it is cloud they have access to you know, thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands, and it's virtual unlimited scalability as far as you're concerned. So it scales up to any number of any of compute cycles or storage or database, you know, size that you need. And it can scale up and scale back. I'm going to pay for what you use. And once you're done using those resources, you return them to the pile and then basically your bill goes down. So it's a scalability around the amount of money you're willing to pay. And the scalability is typically on demand and typically can be auto-provisioned directly from the application. And development is productive. They have some uh, very nicely designed, uh, very user-friendly, uh, very productive development environments out there in the platform as a service space right now. So what about the bad limitations? It can you can only use what's there. So if I'm going to basically pick a platform as a service provider, I'm only provided those capabilities and features and functions that they provide. Uh, and I can't add, typically do add-ons and you know third-party products or customize it uh, very much, you know, as I could with the on-premise systems. And standards few exist. Every platform as a service player out there takes their own proprietary way in how you should be building and deploying applications. So you're in essence going to walk down the aisle with that plat platform as a service player. So the major platform as a service players are Google, which is the most popular, that's Google App Engine, Heroku, which I think is the most misunderstood, and then Amazon Web Services with Elastic Beanstalk. And that's the new guy out there. Uh, they've been only they've been out there with less than a year with their offering. Now this isn't everybody. Salesforce says force.com, you know, don't send me angry emails if you use that. This is basically just talking about the major players out there. The ones that I see most often uh, in my wanderings, people who are leveraging platforms of service in the world of cloud computing. Google App Engine looks like this, has a sandbox approach, typically top down. Uh, it's fairly highly limited in what you're able to do. It's very, very much at, uh, you know, it keeps you into the way in which they think you should be doing application development and deployment. Simplicity trade off at the expense of developer control, in essence. And so, what Google's approach is, is that they're going to put you in a very tight box. And they're doing that because they believe that uh, uh, it's going to make things easier 
for you to build and deploy code and therefore you're going to be more productive and they don't allow a lot of control you're unable to get to the metal in many instances of course in fact most of these platforms of service plays you can't get to the metal you can't do a lot of things where you provided very fine-grained control you know as you are if you're sitting down and programming a PC Heroku also uses a sandbox approach it's also highly limited and also the uh, so simplicity trade-off at expense of developer control, so very much like Google. And so what Heroku, Heroku, Heroku excuse me, so keeps you into, a, uh, into a, a boundary, so to speak, and you're able to leverage the, uh, the core capabilities of the platform as a service uh, system, and you can't go out of that very easily. And again, it's simplicity trade-off at the expense of developer control. Uh, whether you go with Heroku or Google App Engine really kind of depends on the requirements of your application. And you can do a feature function trade-off with each of the systems to figure out which ones are going to be right for you. The new guy, Elastic Beanstalk, uh, also does a bottom-up approach and simplicity with, large, with a higher degree of control for the developer. So if anything is different than these two, is that uh, our, between Elastic Beanstalk, Google, and Heroku, is that uh, uh, Amazon really kind of allows you to get closer and closer to the metal and closer and closer to the primitives that are there. And so they take a bottom-up approach. They try to make the environment as simple as they can, but they have a higher degree of control ultimately for the developer. So if you're used to having a high degree of fine-grained control uh, within while you're building your applications, Elastic Beanstalk may be the one you want to look at. If you look, if you want to be kept in a sandbox, so to speak, or in with boundaries, so to speak, to make things easier and simpler, so you don't make mistakes, then obviously Heroku and uh, Google App Engine are going to be more appealing to you. So, real-world advice: make sure to consider the target applications. People often, um, you know, don't look at where they're going in order to determine the best way to get there. Static application requirements often lead to platform as a service not being a fit. So if you understand the capabilities of your platform as a service player that you're looking at or players that you're looking at, make sure it's going to fulfill the needs of the application. In many instances, people try to force fit it because you know, platform as a service is cool right now. They want to leverage that technology. And no matter what the requirements are, they end up with Google App Engine or you know whatever. And if you do that, you're going to end up in trouble because your app dev test development environment, your development environment is not going to be able to match up to your application requirements. Make sure to consider resources required. Uh, platforms of service clouds, you know, limit use of resources or they become too expensive quickly. You know, you got to understand that you're paying for this service very much like you know the cable bill. And if we're going to scale up, or very much like the water bill or the electricity bill, if we're going to scale up and use lots of resources, we're going to get a larger bill. You need to figure out what that larger bill is and make sure it's cost effective for what we're looking to do. Make sure to consider data persistence. You know, data support varies greatly. How you're going to lay stuff back down into the system. They use structured and unstructured capabilities. Sometimes you know standards, sometimes non-standards. All those things have to be baked in. Also, sometimes multiple databases that you have access to in the back end. So you don't have access to just one. Any number of ways you can store you you can uh, store data, store information in those apps and those platforms as service players. Make sure not to get religious around the languages. You know. Uh, I understand that there's lots of people out there that love Ruby and lots of people out there love Python. Um, however, I would really look to the features and functions of the tool first and then the language that they support second. Make sure to consider leveraging the outside world. You need to interact with other clouds and other on-premise systems. Make sure to understand how the integration occurs between your core systems and the platforms of service application instance you're looking at. So you can actually move information in between these systems. Some of them support um, very fine-grained, very uh, rudimentary integration services. Some of them are, it's kind of an afterthought, clearly. And you need to figure out, number one, what features and functions they provide and how you're going to be able to leverage those features and functions to make sure information is, is pushed out of the system and brought into the system. And make sure to consider staging and testing. you got to have the testing capabilities within the system in order to build quality applications. And you need to make sure you've gone over how your platforms as a service player or your candidates are going to support that. So what are the best practices? Number one, start with the data and work up to the services and user interface. No matter what the platforms the service provider suggests, I suggest you take that way up. You know, in other words, build your information model, 
work up to your services, and then bind those services up into a user interface or even a process layer. Uh, that's the best way to build applications. It's going to be more productive, and it's going to cause a lot less re re rework toward the end. Also, it's uh, typically the way we like to design apps. Create an initial uh, proof of concept to make sure to validate the complete stack. In other words, test it, make sure it works. And they typically allow you to do that for free or greatly reduce costs. So, you know, run some benchmarks against it. Make sure it's providing the performance. Make sure you're able to allocate the resources. Make sure the language bindings are working correctly. Make sure the data uh, persistence is working correctly. Define a staging and testing strategy before you begin development. Can't stress that enough. You have to be able to test this thing. It has to be able to go out into a staging environment and needs to be promoted into production. You have to kind of set that up because the life cycle of the application, that's how you're going to live. You're going to put a lot of the bug fixes and a lot of the features and function changes into a staging environment, promote it into a production environment. You need to make sure you're tracking code, you're tracking versions, you know, release management, all those sorts of things are going to be built in your system. Consider SOA approaches in design and development of the platforms of service-based applications. Kind of out of the scope of this presentation, but you know, take a you know, read my book, read other books on service-oriented architecture. Make sure you kind of leverage those patterns and how you define define and deploy applications. You're going to build things that are much better, much more productive, much more agile, and therefore much more valuable to the organization. Make sure you do load testing along with functional testing. Make sure it's going to perform. Make sure to model performance. In other words, where you're going to go and how you're going to get there and you have 10,000 users versus 1,000 right now in two years, this is where you're looking to go. Is it going to be able to, you know, to manage performance? Is it going to be too cost? Is it going to be too costly? Is the thing going to fall over? Uh, you need to make sure to test that. And don't fall in love with the SaaS uh, platform as a service player. You may need to use several. You know, so I hear people we're standardizing on Google App Engine. Well, that's probably a dangerous precedence because it's okay to leverage kind of a key platform as a service player, but ultimately, just like other development tools, we need to mix and match them. Uh, for the right applications and the right requirements and all the things we have to do if we kind of force fit what we think is going to be a standard with each and every problem domain we're going to find that we're missing the boat in many instances so find the most productive and the most uh, feature aligned um, platform as a service players that are you know going to be aligned to the requirements you're looking to make up uh, looking to uh, to adhere to the business uh, the business issues and if you fall in love with one uh, you're going to find your heart gets broken a little bit down the line So again, Blue Mountain Labs, uh, we're here to help you move into cloud computing, provide advisory development. Uh, we're thought leaders in the cloud computing space. We provide cutting edge services. If you're looking for a vendor agnostic, a, a, service, uh, ser a cloud service agnostic uh, consultant to advise you and move you in the right direction, uh, provide you with those capabilities, whether you're moving to public, private, hybrid cloud computing, or just changing your enterprise toward cloud computing give us a call. And again, you can find us at www.bluemountainlabs.com. Well, I want to thank you very much for uh, listening to yet another video. Uh, please let us know what you think. You can reach me at david at bluemountainlabs.com. And uh, let me know if you want us to continue to do this. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, don't forget to uh, give us the big thumbs up here on YouTube.